Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Sunday. Welcome to another Cook Along Live. Um, this is episode 43. We've been doing this for 43 weeks, which is pretty incredible if you know how uh, regularly I generally post things when I say I'm going to post them. So, without further ado, let's get started. We're making some fried rice tonight, egg fried rice. Um, I am using a wok. Now, if you don't have a wok, if all you have is a frying pan or a skillet or something like that, you can do just the same. Um, I do want to give you a little bit of a history not a history, but like an explanation on why people like using woks with things like stir fry. When you expose the wok to heat, you got this curved surface down here. This is basically right over the heat. So the bottom of the wok gets the brunt of the heat energy that's coming out of whatever the cooking medium is that you're using. I'm using an induction stove, which actually does work with my wok. I was pretty, pretty surprised to see. Um, but you could be using flame, charcoal, really anything. And what ends up happening is the bottom of the wok, right where that heat is being applied, gets super, super hot. Now, if you're using a skillet, the entire bottom of that skillet is going to be up against that heat. So the entire bottom of your skillet is going to get hot. The beauty with the wok is when you throw ingredients in, you cook them off on the bottom part of the wok, and then you can slide them up along the side, which is hot, but is not having direct heat applied to it. So you're a lot less likely to have things stick to the wok. You're a lot less likely to have things burn once you've kind of cooked them through. You can keep them warm, keep them hot on the sides, and just gently cook them while you're cooking whatever the next ingredient is that you're putting into the wok. In a skillet, that's a little bit more difficult to do because usually in the skillet, the entire bottom of that skillet is up against the heat. So the entire, everything that's in that skillet is gonna be getting hot. If you're going to be doing something like a stir fry or fried rice or anything where you want to simulate using a wok with a skillet, just offset your skillet off the heat and just make sure that the side away from you is the hot one, the side towards you is the cooler side, and then you can actually then moderate heat by just sliding it back over the heat or pulling it back off the heat and then keep things cooking kind of that way. The new ingredients put on the hot side, the ingredients that you've already cooked and just kind of want to keep warm but not burn, slide over onto the cold side. So. Taking a look over here, <laughs> we are gonna get fried. Hey, Etienne, what's up? And Kim, good to see you guys. And Drake, doesn't matter. Um, Non-stick would be just fine. You're not gonna get the same amount of like fond on the bottom in a non-stick pan, but uh, it's a lot easier to clean up and goes just as quickly as using a, a, a wok. If you're using cast iron, if you wanna do any of the, you know, tossing, um, it's going to be a little bit heavier, so it might be a little bit more difficult to get that working right, but either medium is going to work just fine. Um, and Mike, I was not on Ch Top Chef. This is uh, actually a, uh apron that says Top Chief, and if you are a Halo fan at all, this is the Master Chief's battle rifle. And uh, I have a really good friend of mine, his name is, uh, uh, his handle is Mad Cow, his, his name is Joey or Josiah. And um, we were huge Halo fans. Actually, ran a pretty popular Halo fan site back in the day. That's how nerdy I am. Um, a lot of fun, and we were such big Halo fans, and both of us became really big uh, cooking fans. We love cooking. We love uh, kind of doing the foodie thing. So he went and got these aprons made to, to kind of pay homage to Top Chef, but uh, it's a Top Chief instead. So kind of a fun little story behind the apron. Thank you for asking. Um, <laughs> yes, it would definitely be an arm workout, Drake. And uh, they're not cast iron, but they're, they are um, steel. This is a steel wok. What is it? I can't remember the name, what are the type of metal that it is. But it's not cast iron. It is something steel. Anyway, yeah, they don't, make, they don't generally make cast iron woks. That would definitely be a workout. Um, but let's get started. If you're using nonstick, don't get it heated up quite yet. If you're using um, this kind of a wok or anything else like a stainless steel skillet, go ahead and get your burner on. I'm gonna turn mine on as hot as it can go. Uh, this wok I know can handle it. If you're using stainless steel, maybe medium high and just offset it so that like the top you know, quarter, the top half is uh, on the heat and the rest is off the heat. Mix drinks into the vids. Oh, that's actually a good idea. Um, generally speaking, I have something that I'm drinking and I'll just pop a beer or something. Um, today I didn't have anything, so sorry, not today. That is actually a pretty good idea, being able to do uh, like a, a drink or an aperitif or something that goes along with what we're cooking. I like it, I like it. Maybe I'll incorporate that into the channel moving forward. Carbon steel, Kim, yes, thank you. Carbon steel walk over here. Um, very similar to cast iron, but a lot thinner. 
same kind of makeup, um, but slightly different. Uh, works very similarly to cast iron though. Cool, so we're getting this preheated. If, you're, if your cooking vessel starts smoking or anything like that, go ahead and turn down the heat. Uh, we wanna keep it at a really warm, we wanna keep it hot, but we don't wanna like break it. So, so please don't break your cookware, but we do want it hot before we start cooking. Now, stir fry and egg fried rice, and if you're using chicken or any kind of other uh, protein going into the rice, this goes very fast. So what we're gonna do is while this is heating up, we're gonna be prepping all of our ingredients to go into it. That way when we're ready to cook, we can just toss it all into the wok and get it going without having to take the time to do any kind of prep. And I just realized I forgot my knife, so I will be right back. What good is a cook if he doesn't have the most basic of cooking utensils? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and crack my three eggs into a bowl. We're gonna whisk them up and kind of scramble them. You'll notice that I'm actually hitting the eggs against each other. Only one egg will ever crack. So if you want a real quick way to go through eggs, and then the last one will just crack on the corner or on a flat surface. That's a kind of fun way to do it. I'm just gonna set those on the side for now. And I'm gonna grab a little fork here and whisk those guys up. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually gonna start with my chili. I just have a uh, kind of long Thai chili, Fresno chili. I'm just gonna cut this into, I don't know, I'm gonna say quarter to half inch slices. And I'm just gonna use the whole chili. If you don't like too much heat in your egg fried rice, if you want it to be a little bit more mild, maybe cut the chili in half and remove the seeds. This isn't gonna actually be all that hot because the heat from this is gonna kind of mellow that down just a bit, but if you're one of those people who is just not a fan of hot, um, maybe remove the seeds first. Garlic, I've got one clove. I've got a really nice sized clove of garlic. I like garlic in my fried rice. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just kind of lay it down, give it a nice little love tap, I like to call it, because that's how you can you know, peel its outer covering off. Gotta show it a little love, right? And then we'll just get the skin off. I'm going to grate this through a microplane. I'm actually going to grate this right over um, my chilies. If you don't have a microplane grater, you can absolutely just dice this down. Uh, the microplane just gets it a little bit finer and goes a little bit quicker. We're also going to be grating our garlic, uh, I'm sorry, our ginger. And we're going to be adding all of these at the same time right at the beginning. So just gonna kind of put them all into one pile. Now my wok is actually kind of one of those interesting things where I'm using a, a, a curved wok. I'm actually gonna switch to this camera here. I'm actually using a wok that's not flat. None of it is flat. It's just a totally curved wok. I'm using it on an induction uh, stove that is actually flat. Um, so if you take a look here, you'll notice I can like move it around. It doesn't sit still. It wobbles quite a bit. Uh, if you have a flat bottom wok, that works just as fine. Uh, this actually works wonderfully on this induction cooktop. So this might be an option if you were thinking about going this route, maybe grabbing a carbon steel wok that's nice and round and uh, using an induction cooktop or any kind of a, any kind of a heat surface really. This also should work on electric, although Honestly, electric doesn't work very well. It's not very, very quick for heating up and cooling down. But, you know, you gotta, gotta work with what you got. The induction cooktop I picked up just because I didn't like the electric that I was working with at the time, and uh, this works a lot better. All right, garlic, or garlic, again, ginger. We're gonna go ahead and peel off the skin. I like to use a spoon, and then really all you gotta do is just kinda scrape along the outside of the ginger and all of the skin should come right off. If you have a peeler you can use that as well. A spoon generally will also get into some of the crevices where a peeler will just kind of take off that little nubbin. And I'm just going to get most of the skin off Oops, as I fling it across my cutting board. most of this off. 
You can also use a paring knife. Totally up to you. I just happen to like using a spoon. There we go. Get some of this stuff cleaned off. And then I'm going to cut off the top of this bad boy. By the way, how is this overhead camera this week? Is it sharper? I, I realized last week that I had the manual focus turned on, and I had been using it for a flight blog in my room, so I had focused it for that, and then did not turn autofocus back on. So it was not focused right, and that's why it was blurry. So hopefully this time it looks a little bit sharper, a little bit nicer. I'm going to go ahead and just grate our ginger. Again, right on top of our chilies and the garlic. Awesome, Jeremy. And I do like to do the one-handed crack occasionally, but... Oftentimes it's just easier to do the two-handed crack. Unless you're trying to show off. I'm going to try and grate about as much ginger as I have garlic, so equal parts, basically. There we go. Just use the back of the ginger here to kind of scrape it out of the microplane. And now we've got our spoon, we can go into the crevice and get out the rest as best you can. Cool, so there's some of our aromatics. And then last but not least, of course, our green onions. Now green onions are very, very interesting. They, um, can be a pain in the rear to clean. I think in the recipe I said use three. I'm actually going to use four. And I'm going to keep one for garnish. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of take off about an inch off the, off the top on the green side. I'll set that on the side. I'm going to take a quick peek down into these stems and see if I can see any grit or silt or anything in there. And these guys look pretty clean. So when I rinse them, I'm just going to get a little bit of water in there and flick them out, and any of the additional debris should come out. But they look pretty clean. And I'm just going to cut off, I don't know, maybe a half inch on the bottom, get these roots off. And then I'm going to find basically the outer layer and just peel it off from there. And that'll get, again, most of the grit off. You're still going to have plenty of onion left over. And then when you rinse it, anything that's left behind will come off as well. There's usually like a little bit of a papery, slippery skin on these onions as well. Just go ahead and slide all of that off. And then sometimes like on this one here, you'll notice like there's a bit of a stem that got kind of broken off. And so I'll just peel that guy off because that's usually where all the grit is. And I'll leave the rest of the onion whole. Go ahead and get rid of him. And basically all I'm doing here is looking for for silt and grit, because if you're eating these, this is where you're going to get it from. If you're making something like tabbouleh, that can also show up on uh, the parsley. So I'll check the parsley pretty good for grit. And see here, we got that one outer little uh, layer, and we're just going to peel off. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and give these a quick rinse. I'll be right back. We will get our onions chopped up to go into our pan. You'll notice that we've been heating our pan this whole time. Again, if yours is starting to smoke, go ahead and turn down the heat just a bit, and we'll turn it back up right before we put everything in. Mine has just been going. It's really warm in there, and it's not smoking at all. So, one of the benefits of carbon steel. Caspro, you know, I, I, wish, I, I wish I did woo the girls. I, I, can't get a date to save my life, so that's why I do a cook-along live show on Sundays. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I absolutely love doing this. Um, still can't get a girl to save my life. Anyway, we're going to cut this into about quarter inch, just like the pepper. And we're just going to cut right through, like so. And we're just going to get all this piled up together. Because it's all going in at the same time. Some of your onions may try to escape. That's perfectly normal. They don't like being cooked. 
but they do enjoy being eaten, so just that just that initial fear, right? Got all that ready, we're gonna go ahead and take our eggs, give them a quick beat through. And all I'm doing is turning my fork like this, basically up and down. That's that's the motion I'm making, just right in the bottom of this bowl. And then that will beat your eggs together really, really quickly and really well. It's just an up and down circular motion. And we're not trying to whisk these and like build in any air, we just are trying to mix them together. And there we go. Now the last thing that I'm going to grab, I have my rice from yesterday. Get that ready to go as well. So, the reason that we want to use day-old rice as opposed to making rice fresh and then throwing it into the pan is day-old rice has a little bit of a chance to dry out. So if you are using fresh rice, if you're using rice that you just cooked, it's usually fairly steamy. It's usually fairly wet and moist, and it's got a lot of moisture content in it. After you have finished with your rice, you've put it in the fridge, while it's in the fridge cooling down, it actually dries out a bit. What that ends up doing is it makes the rice granules kind of not stick together as much as they normally would, plus it removes a lot of the moisture. And if you guys have watched a lot of my cooking uh, shows in the past, you know that the reason that meat doesn't sear well is because it has moisture on the outside. The reason that if you're doing like a chicken breast, you want to really dry it out before you um, put it into a pan or before you roast it. You want to get it as dry as you can so that the skin can actually start crisping up because until it does, all you're doing is steaming off that water. It has to evaporate before you can have that Maillard reaction and actually get that cooking going, that, that nice sear, that nice crispiness. Um, same thing with the rice. If you're putting a, a bunch of, you know, just cooked wet rice into a uh, skillet or a wok or any kind of a cooking vessel, all of that water, all that moisture has to steam off before the rice will actually get fried. So having day old rice, that's why people say use day old rice. There's really no, nothing that says that you have to. If you totally forgot to make rice or if you're like, hmm, fried rice sounds like a great idea tonight. You can go ahead and make it that day. It's not, a, it's not going to make that big of a difference. However, you might notice it's a little bit chewier or maybe it's a little bit less, um, you know, fried off than it normally would be if you had a little bit older rice. So just wanted to talk about that a little bit. Um, so if you're cooking rice right now and you're going to be making this after the show, awesome. Um, if you have leftover rice from the day before, you're also in great shape. So let's get started. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to fry off our veggies first, all of our aromatics. They're going to be in there for about a minute to two minutes. We're going to get it nice and, uh, nice and kind of cooked up, basically. Then we're going to add our eggs, and then we're going to fry off our eggs, get those nice and scrambled and, and, and cooked through. Then we're going to add our rice, and we're going to start frying our rice in with everything else. And then at the very end, we're going to add all of our, all of our flavorings, which is, uh, in this case, I've got some sesame oil, I've got some soy sauce. If you have sweet soy sauce, that works really well. If not, you can add a little bit of um, uh, seasoned rice wine uh, along with your soy sauce, and you'll get a similar effect. And our sambal chili. So we're going to be adding all of those guys, and then I've got some uh, mixed sesame seeds and a green onion to kind of garnish it at the end. So this is going to go pretty quick, and... We're going to want to go with an oil that is high temperature and low flavor. So in this case, I'm using canola oil. I also use um, peanut oil, another great option. And let's switch to this. And we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and pour in a decent amount of oil. I'd say maybe like a quarter cup. We're going to let that kind of heat up a little bit in this pan or wok. I'm just going to kind of swirl it around. Now, if you're doing this over a really high heat with a wok, your oil may be smoking already, which is great. I'm going to let mine sit for just a bit. The induction takes a little bit to get through, but it is getting everything nice and hot. And then I'm actually going to take my cutting board and slide it backwards just a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is actually move my wok over here just slide my veggies right into it. Just like that. Keep it here. We're going to get everything cooked through. Again, this is going to take about a minute, maybe two minutes at the most.
You'll notice you already got a lot of really vibrant colors in here, just with the onions and the chilies and garlic doesn't add very much uh, color, but you're getting a lot of really good aroma. You want to keep everything in here moving. You don't want to let it sit for very long because that's when it's going to start sticking. That's when it's going to start burning. And you'll notice that some of this is I'm actually kind of pushing it up on the sides and then bringing it back down through the center into the oil to get some of that heat back into it and then moving it back up onto the sides. Now, if you're using a skillet, you're going to have everything on one side over the heat. You're going to be doing everything and you're going to be pushing it or pulling it all the way over to the cooler side of your cooking vessel, if you will. All right, peppers are getting soft. Garlic is starting to get golden brown, which is great. So what I'm gonna do right now is just kind of move everything off to one of the sides. And we're gonna get our scrambled eggs in here. And here we go, right in. Perfect. Same thing, we're just gonna keep this scrambling. I'm going to be incorporating all of these veggies into the eggs and moving everything around. We're basically going to go until the eggs are just about cooked. Look at how quickly that happens. There we go. I'm going to push everything up off to the sides again. And again, if you're using a skillet, once your eggs are kind of cooked, slide them over to the cooler side of the skillet. And now we're going to go with our rice. And I'm just going to use my hands, grab a nice little hunk, get it in there. I want about as much rice as I have everything else. You can go a little heavy handed on the rice if maybe you uh, added a little bit of a hot chili or, you know, you want to take the flavor down. I don't want to say the flavor down. You want to take kind of the heat down a little bit, add a little bit more rice because it'll absorb a little bit more of that heat. Now I'm okay if the rice gets a little toasty, more so than the garlic, because you don't want to burn the garlic, and you don't want to overcook your eggs too much. There we go. This rice is still fairly sticky, but just imagine how sticky it would be if it were fresh. And you'll also notice that there's not very much steam coming off of this rice. If this was just cooked rice, like fresh cooked rice, it would just be steaming all over the place. So what we're going to do is just break up our rice. It is still going to be clumped together even though it's dry. And if it's fresh rice, just make sure that, yes, it's absolutely broken apart. And then what we're going to do is basically just let this kind of fry for a little bit. You can stir it around. Keep things moving. If you start getting pieces of uh, egg or anything else kind of stick into the sides, just scrape them off. They should come off pretty easily. Should release fairly easily. We're just going to get everything here mixed through and just keep it frying. Now everything should slide around pretty easily in the wok and of course if you're comfortable with it you can absolutely just start doing some flipping. <laughs> as long as you keep things moving. That's really the name of the game here. Again, everything in the middle of this pan or this wok is going to be cooking very fast. It's going to be cooking very hot. It's going to be getting uh, nice and fried and toasty. Everything on the outside is still going to be warm because, of course, the wok is absorbing heat, but it's not going to be direct heat. It's indirect heat. So it's just keeping it warm. It's cooking it, but not burning it. And that's why you just want to keep things moving through the middle of the pan, up to the sides, through the middle of the pan, up to the sides. That way you get a nice, nice amount of color, a nice amount of flavor all throughout everything. I'm going to let that cook for, I don't know, maybe another minute or two. Now, if you want to practice your tossing skills, you absolutely can. And really all you're doing is pushing things up the side this way. You want to just push away from you. And then as it flips up that side, it's going to automatically kind of come back. A lot of people say it's like a shovel motion. You go down and away. And then as it, as it gets to the end, you flip it up. 
and it'll uh, flip back into the pan. So something like that. It does take a little bit of practice. And here we go, we're getting a little bit of color on the rice and some on the eggs, which is great. This is looking wonderful. Now, if you want to practice with this, get your wok, get your cooking uh, utensil, whatever it is, a pan, a skillet, um, throw some uh, cheese balls in there, and you'll really, really quickly get the hang of uh, flipping things around. So. And then it doesn't help to have a, a little bit of a vacuum cleaner dog to come over and pick anything up that may fall into the ground. There we go. I'm just making sure to scrape down the sides if there's anything stuck. Not very much is sticking to my pan, which is great. And the rice is looking Pretty good. So what I'm going to do, switch back over here. I'm going to make myself a little bit of a well in the middle. You'll notice that your rice might be uh, kind of dancing around down there. That's a good sign. I'm going to go ahead and put in about, I don't know, a tablespoon or so of sambal. I'm going to pour in about a teaspoon, maybe two teaspoons of soy sauce. I'm going to add just a teaspoon of sesame oil. And you'll notice that that's cooking through. And I'm going to go ahead and just start incorporating it into the rice. You can flip it through like so. You can stir it through this way. Whatever is easiest for you. Just make sure you get it nice and work through everything covered in this sauce. And our fried rice is pretty much done. Of course, you can keep cooking it um, if you want it to get it a little crispier or a little bit more dark. It's totally up to you. But I think this is going to be good for me. Give it another, another toss or two for good measure. And now what I'm going to do is just taste it, make sure it's seasoned well. Mm-hmm. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Very good. Grab our serving dish. Go ahead and... Stop our cooking, and we will just pour our rice into our dish. Anything that's stuck to the bottom, we can just scrape off. These are the crispy bits. They should release fairly simple, simply. And we'll just get everything into our bowl. And there we are, some egg fried rice, done and ready to go. Now this will probably serve about two people. If you wanted to make more, of course, just uh, double the recipe. It's uh, pretty, pretty, pretty easy as far as those things go. Switch back over here. Give you a nice little view of some delicious egg fried rice. So, if you guys cooked along with me tonight, hopefully it uh, went fairly smoothly and everything uh, came out the way you expected. I'm curious, I think Drake, Drake was definitely cooking along with me. How is everything going? Are you guys with me? Um, or did I go a little too fast? Or how's it working with your skillet? Just curious on that one. And while I'm waiting on that, I'll grab a spoon and absolutely eat your fried rice with whatever utensil you feel is appropriate. Um, I'm going to use a spoon for this. Go ahead and give it a nice little 
scooping. Mm hmm. Mm. That is yummy. Cool. So that's done. As far as garnish, I'm going to take my green onion that I have left over. I'm going to cut this at an angle. Go ahead and we'll do that. So I'm going to take my green onion. I'm actually going to turn it almost 45 degrees to me. And then I'm also going to kind of step aside this way and just kind of cut this in very long, thin strips. And I'm going to cut all the way up the green onion. I want some of the white. I want some of the green. And cutting it on an angle like this gives you these nice, long, kind of really cool looking strips of green onion, as opposed to just rounds. And then you can just mix them up like so. And then what I'm going to do is I think I'll put, do this, flatten it out just a bit. You gotta make it look good for Instagram, of course. There we are. Move a couple of the little egg pieces to the middle and some of the chilies. As we know, the better something looks, the better something tastes. So that is what we're doing here. We're just making sure that it looks as good as we want it to taste. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of my black and regular sesame seeds. Sprinkle them over the top, like so. And then I'm just gonna grab some of my green onions here. Make sure that they're nicely mixed through. Same thing, just kind of pick up a bunch of them. I'm gonna set them right over the middle that and our fried rice is ready to serve go ahead and switch back here and that's what it looks like after it's been garnished. A little bit more fancy. Obviously, that's just an extra step, but it does make it look a little bit more, uh, a little bit more fancy, a little bit more flashy. Uh, absolutely makes it taste better. Like putting uh, stripes on a race car, you definitely get that extra five horsepower out of the presentation when you're doing a, a food dish. No chili jam, James, absolutely not. Although we did use some sambal, so actual chili um, <laughs> puree, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, guys, hopefully, you guys will try fried rice. It's a super easy and quick meal to make. Tastes amazing. Uh, again, you can do it with a wok if you want to be a little bit more traditional or if you're afraid of what Uncle Roger might say. Or you can use a skillet if you just don't have a wok and don't want to invest in one. That's a 100% uh, valid thing. Just make sure that one side of your skillet is the hot one, the hot side. Um, keep that over the direct heat and keep the other side of the skillet off the heat so that it's kind of like on the cooler side. And then that way you can cook things and move them away from the heat when you need to and uh, get a very similar experience to using a wok if you don't have one. Anyway, next week, don't know what we're making yet, but I will be posting on Instagram, so go ahead and follow me there for the ingredients list and, uh, of course, what we're cooking. And the recording for this will be up on YouTube. Go ahead and like, subscribe, share, thumbs up, all of that jazz, and I'll see you next week for another Cook Along Live. Have a great evening, everybody. Thank you.